Hello, I'm Dr. William Marston, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about venous ulcers. Lower extremity ulcers associated with chronic vein dysfunction are a common, debilitating problem that have been reported to afflict nearly one million Americans. Patients experience pain, leg swelling, and limited mobility that severely affects their quality of life. While rarely a cause of limb loss, patients typically experience recurrent ulceration that may result in years of disability. In order to promote forward flow of blood from the legs to the heart, the veins are equipped with valves designed to close and prevent retrograde flow towards the foot when the limb is in a dependent position. These valves may be damaged by the presence of blood clots or may become incompetent as people age and the veins become abnormally dilated. Valve dysfunction results in reflux of blood into the veins of the lower leg, causing abnormally high venous pressure. Over time, this elevated pressure results in varicose veins, thickening of the skin in the lower calf and ankle, and eventually ulceration. Ulcers typically occur in the region of the leg between the ankle and the mid-calf known as the gator region. The ulcer usually extends through the entire thickness of the skin into the subcutaneous tissue, but does not involve deeper structures such as muscle, tendon, or bone. Limbs affected with venous leg ulcers have a characteristic appearance with hyperpigmentation of the skin, significant swelling, and varicose veins in most cases. 20% of limbs with venous ulcers also have peripheral arterial disease, which must be diagnosed as a part of the initial evaluation of these wounds. In most cases, the diagnosis may be made on history and physical examination, but diagnostic confirmation is recommended using Doppler ultrasound to evaluate for the sites of venous insufficiency. The treatment of venous ulcers begins with eliminating the underlying cause, venous hypertension. This may be done by compressing the limb to close the veins partially, reducing reflux and pressure transmission to the skin. Compression should be accomplished by the use of compression bandage systems or compression stockings that apply at least 30 to 40 millimeters of graduated compression to the lower extremity. Using these methods, wound healing occurs reliably in 60 to 70 percent of ulcers after three to four months of treatment. Adjunctive methods of therapy that have been proven to accelerate the healing process in clinical trials include pentoxifiline and aplograph. Pentoxifiline is a medication that is believed to increase the deformability of red blood cells and may improve circulation to the wound bed in venous ulcers. Aplograph is a living human skin substitute engineered to provide living skin cells to the wound. These cells release proteins and growth factors that have been found to accelerate the healing process. In some patients, the venous abnormalities causing leg ulceration can be corrected by a vascular specialist. Minimally invasive procedures can be performed percutaneously to correct abnormal venous reflux with a low risk of complications. In this procedure, a laser or radiofrequency catheter is inserted into the abnormal vein to heat the disease segment. This results in collapse and closure of the vein, eliminating the abnormal reflux. Patients who have their venous dysfunction corrected should have a significantly lower risk of recurrent ulceration and an improved quality of life. Evaluation of patients with venous ulcers by a vascular surgeon skilled in these techniques is recommended to determine if the patient's venous insufficiency may be corrected or improved significantly. Leg ulcers that do not respond to initial therapy with compression modalities should be referred to a specialist for further evaluation. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.